Living history, World War II stories as told by those who were there. Captain Price was a P-38 pilot in the Pacific during World War II. My name is Everett Price, E-V-E-R-E-T-T-P-R-I-C-E. -E -E. I was born in Livermore, Kentucky, a little town in western Kentucky. And I uh, sang in the chorus and um, I played the violin in the orchestra and played the trombone in the band and wound up being the uh, president of the senior class and the mm -hmm. valedictorian, a big man on campus. But in my class, I think there were 26 kids in my class. I hated the job because you're out in that heat and dust and noise all day long, and when you came in at night, everybody else was off, but they wanted me to have all these notes transcribed and typed up by the next morning. And two times, General Patton went along. He was kind of a, a hands-on type guy in the first place. General Patton had a little high squeaky voice in the first place, and in the second place, I think that he's the man that taught our current crop of singers their microphone technique. He stuck his microphone up and then yelled all the time, and he called me in one morning and said, Soldier, I didn't say that. And I said, Well, sir, I try to be as accurate as possible on all these notes, sir. And I, but you know, sir, it's impossible. You do a lot of sir in around Major General. He said, But, and, I usually try to check with whoever dictated these things for accuracy before I type up a final draft, and that's where I should have shut my mouth, but I said, but your microphone technique sure has a lot to be desired. When you, with all that noise going on, and you stick that microphone down in, in your throat and yell like a hit garbage things up so nobody can tell what in the hell you're talking about. <laughs> but, um, and this is a major said, it's a wonder he didn't have you shot. Yeah, I was a PFC, I'd already made one strike from all, and, um, talking to a general that way. But General Patton, uh, I got along very well with him. He was a, he was a, Did he take, did he heed your advice? Did he heed your no, advice? I don't think he ever changed his mind for me. <laughs> I think that he really felt, he, he would tell me about history things when we were around, and I really felt that he really thought that he was a reincarnation of every great general that ever lived. Alexander the Great, he was quite a guy. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'd only been down in Fort Benning for about, um, I guess it was about three months when um, when they, I got a letter from um, the Air Corps that said that you, you're accepted for pilot training. And um, they said there's, there's no class available at this time and you'll be notified when one is available. And this was just about the time that General Patton was going to um, come out here to the desert for the desert training. And so they, they put me in what they called Air Corps on a sign, but there was no Air Corps deal around there. They sent me over to the 1st Parachute Training Regiment just to have my meals and all that, and had this idiot over there said, look, you're in the 1st Parachute Training Regiment, you take jump training. And I jumped off their towers, jumped off that stuff, and and I made, I made four jumps. They brainwash you, you see. The parachute is just another means of transportation. You go up an airplane, you come down with parachute. And the first jump that I made, it seemed to indicate that that was, I jumped up out of that thing and I was remembering everything. I got that parachute hanging down wing. I was up on those risers, with my knees kind of bent and the ground coming up. And about that time, a little gust of air hit me. I just stopped and just set my feet down and rolled that chute up. And I thought, boy, there is nothing to this stuff. I think on the second one, I landed in a little, edge of the Chattahoochee River, and on the next one I got in a tree, so I learned <laughs> that, 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 that whatnot. But they finally got that through there, before I even graduated from jump training, I, I got out of that place and they sent me to um, to Santa Ana Army Air Base down here for, for uh, pre-flight training. Yeah. I soloed after four and a half hours, dual time, and they had a ball up there. As, as Sometimes as much as 30 bombers on a raid like and that. And you would have how many P-38s up? We only had 16. And that, that's all we had. And we lost, we started losing them too. I would come in with bullet holes and I'd have a clue to how they got. What a lot of these characters around there that thought a P-38 was too hot for one man to handle and all that ridiculous stuff. So I I just went out to demonstrate how easy it was to handle. And, and what I did, I flew it under some telephone lines between Tempe and two miles from the from the highway. I had it under full emergency military power. When you were getting pretty close to 500 miles an hour in that thing, 
And I, I remember pulling up a little bit a couple of times, going over barbed wire fences, but I went on the telephone lines, and on the, on the telephone lines on the other side, and I made a climbing turn. The, these other guys were in a B-25 to see this job well done. And the tower at Williams called us, all P-38s in the area report in, and land immediately. And to land, I had to really, you know, to put on my performance too, so I beat up that field just like I had that and pulled it up in a half loop and flew back across the field upside down <laughs> and split us out and dropped the landing gear and set it down. And the operations officer just wasn't too terribly enchanted with that approach either, but um, that's what got me grounded. <laughs>